sometimes you just know a movie's gonna be terrible. What's the worst that could happen? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 signs a movie is gonna suck. You know, actually, I don't think it's a good idea. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at clues that may indicate that a movie isn't gonna be very good. You have no idea what you're doing. Number 10. It's a sequel to a horror movie. Something happened to us in the woods. Something evil. While there are some notable exceptions to this rule, horror movie sequels tend to be at best not as good as the original, and at worst, downright terrible. Classic horror films like The Exorcist, Halloween, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and Friday the 13th all have terrible sequels within their respective franchises. You know, if you don't believe in the Blair Witch, then why the hell did you bother to come? I thought the movie was cool. Typically, horror movie sequels tend to suffer because the iconic villain from the first film is brought back to life in some ridiculous way, or because they decide to overemphasize the violence and gore. Either way, Jason and Freddy can only have so many quote-unquote final chapters. Jesus Christmas! Holy Jesus God damn! Number 9. It's a comedy with old actors. Do you guys have drugs? Does Lipitor count? It's never a good sign when a bunch of old actors get together to do a comedy. The plot usually revolves around these characters taking some sort of trip together to recapture their youth. And it almost always involves the same mishaps. So I'm gonna be an old dad for two weeks. You're gonna be Uncle Charlie. It's almost a guarantee that you'll hear at least one joke about Viagra, and there will always be an extremely beautiful and far younger actress who is attracted to one of the main characters for some reason. All of the best jokes will be in the trailer, so if that fails to make you laugh, you can bet the rest of the film will fail as well. Hey, Grandpa, don't you think we should probably start talking? <laughs> Number 8. It has a very aggressive marketing campaign. Something tells me a whole lot of people are about to die. While movie studio executives may at times value commercial success over critical success, they tend to know when a movie isn't very good. They also know that poor critical success could ruin their financial goals, so they'll put out an aggressive marketing campaign to get audiences to flood the theaters on opening weekend, before the negative reviews can circulate. Uh, we made magic today, and that's all I gotta say. This may include a huge billboard presence, particularly in Hollywood, and numerous trailers and TV spots in the weeks leading up to the film's release. If it feels like a movie is being over-advertised, chances are it's because it isn't very good. Liberated forever! Domesticated never! Yeah! Number 7. The studio keeps pushing back its release date. If you don't want to make a profit, that's fine. But don't stop the rest of us. Pushing back the release date of a movie is never a good sign. This is especially true for summer blockbusters that may be pushed back to the fall, but also for films that are pushed from award season. Is there any way to fix it? There may have been some award buzz around the film in the initial stages, but upon realizing that the movie doesn't really have a chance, the release date is usually pushed back to ensure a better turnout at the box office. Regardless of the reason, pushing back the release date is almost always bad news. Can you, uh, just go home? Number 6. Review embargoes put in place until the last minute. Please need a hug? We're not really a hugging family. The point of a press embargo is to prevent any reviews from being released until a day or two before the film appears in theaters. While they don't restrict what you can say about the film, they do restrict when you can say it which can significantly impact the movie's success, particularly on its opening weekend. What do you suggest? Send everything we've got. Although this does encourage critics to take their time with their reviews to ensure quality, it also hints that the film may get bad reviews, and that the studio is attempting to prevent negative word of mouth. Nothing is impossible, only mathematically improbable. Number 5. It has poor casting choices. Lady, a woman of your beauty has no need for such decorations. This one may seem obvious, but it is generally pretty accurate. Several famous actors and actresses have seemingly never appeared in a good film, or at the very least haven't in many years. When you see these familiar faces in a trailer or on a poster, you can almost always tell that a movie won't be very good. I could have stopped that bomb! 
Mom, you almost killed us! Of course, this isn't always the case. Many people criticized the casting choices of Gal Gadot and Heath Ledger for Wonder Woman and the Joker respectively, but both surprised with terrific performances. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. Number four, it's a remake of a classic movie. Whatever happens now, you did this! Why does this exist? It's a question we all ask while watching practically every remake. In recent years, Hollywood seems obsessed with giving classic films a makeover, and most have failed to achieve the same success as the original. Take your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human! <laughs> There are some films that should be considered untouchable by modern filmmakers because there's a certain vintage charm to them that's impossible to recapture. Although modern technology can give the special effects an upgrade, these classics should be left alone, as they've proven to withstand the test of time. Check it on. Firm. Check it off. Number three, it's a rom-com style movie with a giant cast. There you have it, young love, full of promise, full of hope, ignorant of reality. Generally, these movies revolve around some form of holiday. Although Love Actually was a success, later films that have tried to recapture that same magic failed both commercially and critically. I married my best friend. I thought I was your best friend. While these movies tend to feature huge casts with several famous actors and actresses, the plot is almost entirely the same, with all the characters connected to each other in some way or another. The lack of a main character hurts the plot, and none of the characters receive enough development because there isn't enough screen time to go around. What would you do today if you knew you would not fail? Number two, it's based on a video game. <laughs> To say that video game movies have a tendency to be terrible is putting it politely. Almost every single movie based on a video game has been a disaster. Considering the fact that video games these days have a cinematic feel about them, it's somewhat surprising this hasn't translated into big screen success. We gotta deal with aliens too? Luigi, we're the aliens! Perhaps it's because video games allow the user to feel like they're in control of the character and the story. Even the releases of Assassin's Creed and Warcraft in the 2010s were critical failures. And if games that popular can't succeed, it's game over for all of them. Your killing me is the only hope we have for peace. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. You look amazing. I feel like a fluffy monstrosity. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing? What's my finger? Oh. <laughs> Ooh, you look like a fun guy. Number one, there is studio interference. Are you kidding? Sometimes directors are given free reign to include or delete any scenes, plot lines, or characters they want. Other times, however, the studio interferes, forcing the director to remove or add certain details. How'd you like that, Spidey? This can happen for a variety of reasons, although in the early 21st century, it's usually done to set up future sequels. This is often to the detriment of the film, however, as most studio additions tend to confuse the plot or add one too many characters to the film. The studio is paying the director to do just that, direct, and most of the time, they would be better served to adopt a hands-off approach. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.